Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating a Halloween-inspired sticky spider web in Houdini. Before we get started, a big thanks goes out to everybody who entered this month's horror challenge, where we had loads of epic horror-themed CG renders. Here's this month's winners who'll be taking home some cool CG prizes from Drop and Render Render Farm, Quixel Mega Scans, and Reality Capture Photogrammetry software. So big congrats guys, and thanks everyone who got involved. You can visit cgshortcuts.com forward slash horror to view all the winning entries, along with the other awesome artworks that were submitted this month. We'll also be revealing this month's new challenge at the end of this video, so stick around for that, or head over to our website for all the latest details. Okay, let's get into the tutorial. So, it seems more and more people are getting into Houdini these days, so we're planning to create loads more Houdini content as well as our usual Cinema 4D stuff. We've also just launched some new Houdini training on our website with the guys over at Motion Designers Community. So if you want to take your Houdini skills to the next level, you might like to go and check that out. Alright, let's create a sticky spider web. We'll start off by creating a geometry node. So down here, we'll hit tab and start typing geo for geometry. And we'll hit enter to bring that in. And we'll rename this to sim for simulation. And we'll click into there. And we're going to create our spiderweb shape first. And the way we're going to do that is with the draw curve node to draw our spiderweb out. And we want this parallel to the floor so our guys can fall down into it. So over in the projection tab, we'll change the projection type to screen plane. And this is going to allow us to draw a shape from whatever perspective we want. And in this case, we want to draw this from the top view. And we can cycle through our views with the numbers on our keyboard. Number one gives us the perspective view, two the front view, and three is the top view as you can see down here. So you could go freestyle and draw your spider web however you want it, but we're going to use a bit of a reference image. If we hit D on the keyboard to bring up our display options, we can import an image under the background tab. We just need to select a view and we're using the top view. And then we just need to pick an image from our computer like so. And if we move this out of the way, there's our spider web reference. And we've got a few controls in here to adjust the image if we need to. So we might just bring that brightness down a tad. And we'll close this and make sure we've got that node selected. Then we'll head over here and select our brush icon. And we can start tracing this shape. If you've got a pen and tablet, this might be slightly easier, but I'm just rolling with my trusty old mouse. And we'll just do this fairly roughly for the tutorial and I'll speed it up a tad for your viewing pleasure. And you could also create something like this procedurally if you wanted to, but I thought we could try out a new tool instead. Okay, so when we're happy with that, we'll switch to camera mode and hit one again on the keyboard to go back to our perspective view. And I think our spider was a little bit drunk when he made this web. It's a little bit sloppy, but you can make yours tidier if you like. But because we're planning to simulate this, we at least want our points to be fairly tidy. If we click this icon, we can actually see the points we have. Firstly, there's a lot of them, and secondly, they're not very evenly distributed. So we'll tidy this up by dragging out another node. This time we'll use the resample node. And if we click here to activate that, straight away, it's done a pretty decent job of tidying up that mess of points. And we can simplify this even more with the length slider here. But I think point one should be fine for us. So our spider web is made of several different lines at the moment, but we want to merge them all together for our simulation. So let's put another node into the mix. This time we'll use a fuse node. And we'll activate that. And just like the name suggests, this is going to fuse our points together depending on how far away from each other they are. And by doing this, we can prevent our web from breaking apart during our simulation, especially in these parts where the lines aren't connected to anything also here in the middle. So let's hide the points and grab that node so I can show you what I mean. If we start to bring the snap distance up, those points start to snap together and merge into a single shape without all those extra end bits. So I think about there looks okay. So now we have our spider web all sorted. So the next step is attaching it to something. So we'll need an object that's just the right shape to encompass all of those endpoints. 
So I think a Taurus might be a good option. So back over here, we'll hit tab and start typing Taurus and bring one of those in. Then we just need to scale and position this around our web. So we can click here and turn this into a template and we can now see through it over here, which will make positioning a bit easier. Then we can increase the scale and make the shape a bit thinner with the radius control here and a little bit larger. We just want all of these edges to fit inside our torus. And I think that should probably do the trick. So now we're going to bind all of the points of our spider web that are within the torus to the torus. And we'll do that with a group create node. And we'll use our spider web as the source data here. And as the bounding object, we'll plug in the torus and activate that. And at first it's binding both objects completely to each other because our group type is set to primitives, but we just want those intersecting points to be bound to the torus. So we'll change this to points. And we also need to specify which points we want exactly. So we'll enable the keep in bounding regions, which selects all the points within a bounding box first, but we want to use our torus instead. So we'll choose bounding object. And we know that's working now as our torus is highlighted blue. And if we zoom in, you can see we've now also highlighted all the points of our spider web within the torus. And these points are now pinned to the torus. So we can even rename this to pin underscore points. Okay, so now we need to start making this dynamic. So we'll bring in a vellum hair node and activate that. And what's cool about doing this with vellum hair is that if we scroll down a bit here, there's an option to use those pin points we just set up. And we can select that with the arrow over here. And there's our pin points group. Okay, so we'll leave the rest of these settings as they are. And we need to bring a solver in now. And we'll need a vellum solver. So we'll bring that in and activate it. And now we should be able to play our simulation through, but we just wanna make sure that we hit the stopwatch icon here so our playback is in real time. So let's hit play. And our spider web starts behaving like hair. And we've definitely got some gravity going on, but I think we might need to adjust our vellum hair settings a bit so our web isn't so stretchy. So we'll pause that and rewind the sim. Then we'll grab this guy and head down to the stretch section and we'll try decreasing the rest length scale. So the web doesn't stretch so far. And we'll give that a play. Okay, that's looking a bit tighter, but it's also a little bit pointy in some places. So we might need to increase the amount of points in our web to smooth those out a bit. And the beauty of working in Houdini is that everything is procedural. So it's super easy to come back up our node stream and change anything we like and have it filtered down the pipeline. So we'll tweak the resample node first and click here so we can see those points. So we'll increase the point count in here by decreasing the length between the points. Something like that. Then in our fuse node, we can also adjust that distance snapping until things are looking nice and even. And I think that should give us a nice sim. So we'll turn off the points and try that. Almost. We've just got one little section that's acting a bit weird here, but we can probably tweak the fusing again to fix that. Let's just rewind first and just bring this up a bit more and see if that fixes it. And that's looking better. And I think this should be fine for the tutorial anyway. You can always tweak those settings until you get it just right. But now we're going to take this a step further and have some little men fall into this web and stick to it. So we can actually delete this solver for now and we'll bring in our guys. And you can use any objects you like to fall into your web and stick, but Houdini actually comes with some handy test geometries we can use. So we are going to use the template body model here. And we'll make this a template by clicking the second button on the right of the node. So we can see this guy in wireframe, or we could just activate it to see exactly what he looks like. And it's important whatever mesh we use that it has good even topology, just like our test guy does here. However, as we'll be simulating this, we also wanna keep the polygon count down as low as possible. So the simulation stays nice and fast. 
And I think this guy might be a tad heavy on the polygons. So let's fix that first. So we can use a remesh node on this guy to do exactly that. And if we activate this, we can see how that's remeshing our model. And it's definitely a bit extreme at first, but we can use the target size to shrink these polygons down and give us something a bit closer to the actual shape of our original geometry. And if we switch template mode off our original, you can see that gives us a nice low res version we can use in our simulation. Okay, so now we need to scale and position this guy above our web so he can fall down into it. So we'll add a transform node into the mix and activate that. Then so we can see our web as well, we'll template that. And you can see he's pretty huge compared to our spider web at the moment. So we'll shrink him down a bit first. So back in here, we can scale him down with the uniform scale control here. And we also want these guys to fall face first into the web. So we'll rotate this 90 degrees like so. Then we'll get a little bit fancy and have them rotate around on the Y axis as they fall or as time goes by. And we can do that with an expression in Houdini. So in the Y axis here, we can type $F, which is the variable for current frame, then asterisk or times 10, meaning every frame rotate this 10 degrees. So if we play that back, it'll keep spinning in the Y axis 10 degrees every frame. All right, so now we wanna make this guy a soft body dynamic object. So it's able to deform organically when we simulate it falling into the web. So we'll add a vellum soft body over here and we can use the one with the strut configuration. And that'll actually bring in these two connected nodes here. So let's take a look at the vellum cloth node. All I wanna do in here is adjust the mass. And I did a test run before, and for this particular scene, 0 0.0001 gave me a good result. And lowering this will make the collisions with the web a little bit more stable. But it's one of those things you might need to play around with and test depending on your scene. All right, so now we wanna be able to access this information over here a little bit later on. So let's create a few nulls down here. So in the first slot here, we'll add a null and call it HO for hair object. Then holding Alt, we'll drag that over here to create a duplicate and connect that to the second slot. And we'll call this one HC for hair constraints. Then we'll make another copy and plug that into the first slot over here. And we'll call this SO for soft body objects. And one more for the second slot, called SC for soft body constraints. And just double check you've got those connected to the right slots before we move on. And this stuff is going to come into play when we create our DOP network a little later on. But first we want to clone our falling guys a bunch of times so we can have loads of them falling down into our web. And we do that a little bit differently in Houdini than we might do in Cinema 4D. We're actually going to bring in some geometry to clone them onto. So we'll make a bit of space in here and bring in a grid. And we'll need to reposition our grid above our web. So let's bring in another transform node and we'll template that so we can see it. And we also wanna see our spider web. So let's enable that. Then back in the transform node, we'll bring this up in the Y axis. So it's above our spider web. And it might be a tad too big, so we'll scale that down as well, just so it roughly fits around our web. And now we can scatter a bunch of our guys onto this with a scatter node. And you can see all the points we've scattered onto there, which by default is 1000 points. But we probably don't want a thousand of these guys falling down all at once, so we're going to use another expression in here instead. I want one guy to be randomly emitted every five frames. So we can use the expression $F% 5 equals equals zero and hit enter. And we also want to randomize the global seed every frame. So we can also use $F in here as well. And we also want to be able to use this in our DOP network. So we'll add yet another null and name it instance underscore points. And now we can finally simulate all of this together with a DOP network. So let's bring one of those in down here. And we'll activate that. And we could even rename this to simulation. 
Then we'll click into that and start setting the sim up. Firstly, we need some gravity. So we'll bring in a gravity force. And after that, we'll need a vellum solver. And that's going to give us this error because it's asking for a vellum object. So we'll need to bring one of those in too, like so. We also don't need any initial data because we'll be using what we created before. So we'll clear out the initial geometry and the initial constraints. Next, we'll need to make a bit of space and bring in a vellum source. And here's where we'll bring our spider web into play. So we could even rename this to web. Then up here in the SOP path, we can link up those nulls we created before under object and sim. Here's all of those nulls from before. So we want the ones that we connected to our spider web, which was the HO or hair object. So we'll bring that in. Then we also need to connect up the hair constraint we made. So same deal. This time we want the HC for constraint. And then we need to do the same thing for our guys. So we'll drag a copy of this over here and rename it guys. But in this one, we'll need to change the emission type to instance on points. And we'll need to switch these with the correct nulls. So this one needs to be SO or soft body object. And this one will need to be the soft body constraints or SC. And we also need to bring in the instance points that we made before. And there it is. All right, so now we need to merge this stuff together and we can do that with a merge node. So we'll plug both of these in here. Then our merge node needs to connect into our solver. And now it's the moment of truth. Let's see if this all works. Let's give it a play. So our web is dynamic. Our guys are appearing and falling randomly and they're colliding with the web but they aren't quite sticking to it. They're just hitting it and falling through. So to get these sticking to the web, we just need to add a constraint. And we'll add that after these three. We want a vellum constraint node. And the type of constraint we want is something sticky like glue. Let's try that. And there's also plenty of settings we can play with to refine how our glue works. But let's just see what effect it has straight out of the box. Let's just frame this up and give that a go. Not quite as sticky as I was hoping for. They're still just bouncing off. And I think that's because we've missed a vital setting back in our constraint. We need to make sure this constraint calculates on every frame, but it's currently only evaluating on the first frame. So we need to switch this to each frame. And now hopefully if we play this back, they should start sticking to the web. And there you go. So have a go at this and don't be afraid to make a better looking spider web or have whatever objects you like sticking to it. As usual, you can download the project files below to save a bit of time or head over to our brand new website where you can download every project file from every tutorial we've ever made. Big thanks to this month's patrons. You guys are the best and there's no way we could make all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers guys. As promised, before we go, it's time to reveal this month's challenge, which is going to be video games. And you can get all the details along with how to enter at cgshortcuts.com forward slash video games. So good luck, happy Halloween, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.